He is the leader of a great band who has uh, every year rocked the house here at Fairfield University. He is an activist, a radio host, and also leader of a great band out of New York City that uh, you all know, Black 47. His name is Larry Kerwan, and we welcome him to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. How you doing, Larry? Hey, Joe. How's it going? Yeah. Finally glad to have you on and, and grab you after all these years. And Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've been real busy. I forgot to mention, uh, as an author, uh, you have a new book out, right? Yeah, it's called Green Suede Shoes. It's, uh, it's kind of an autobiography. Mm-hmm. So it's detailing, you know, growing up in Ireland and the scene in Ireland in the 70s and then coming over here and living in New York on the Lower East Side and being involved in the CBGB's thing and right through to former Black 47 with all that baggage. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's got to be an interesting book. Huh? And it's yeah. called uh, Green Suede Shoes, right? Yeah, it's available in any Barnes and Noble or Borders or independent bookstore. And, and you you've got it at the, at the shows and uh, you, you yeah, I got it at the shows. We bring all the most of the Black Forty Seven CDs and right. books around. Uh, now, now our, our listeners right now they can do their homework and uh, go to the website Black Forty Seven. The number is four seven dot com. And, and this is a really good time of year to see Larry and his band Black Forty Seven because uh, you know you're going to be doing a lot of shows this summer, right? In fact, we're doing one in, in your general area a week from Saturday. We're playing the Fairfield Irish Festival. Oh, that, that's always a big one, yeah. Yeah, I think it's in Trumbull this year. It's moved. Oh, okay, so they went from Fairfield to Seaside Park and then... Yeah. Yeah, right. Moving around a bit. Right, right. We'll be there on Saturday, whenever that date is, the 17th or something. Oh, okay. Maybe the 18th. Yeah, and then uh, you know, I, I saw a, a couple dates off off coming up this summer in Connecticut, and uh, you know, do you like to be this busy doing doing all these dates? Well, the great thing about the summertime is we do a lot of festivals, especially Irish ones, and one of the nice things about that is that it's generational. So you you'll get you know mothers and fathers and their children, and even grandparents who come along and see the band because that's one of the I think that in Black 47 is that you've always had these different generations who, who appreciate the music. Yeah, so... so you know, the rest of the year we play mostly in places that are over 21, so you, you lose out on the younger crowd. Mm-hmm. And, and after people get to be in their late 30s or 40s, they often don't feel like going to uh, bars as much anymore or clubs. You know? So you, you, they... The audience tends to narrow a bit, whereas I like the the full effect of the the full family audience, even if we're not noted for me a totally family band. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, I just got an instant message from one of our DJs. He's listening online, talking about sponsoring the Irish Festival this year. So I'm, I'm sure he's aware of of you guys playing there. So yeah, the people are out there listening and uh, happy to see you coming back to town. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. <sighs> so so uh, we were in Fairfield. We were in the in the college. Pretty recently, about, yeah. about three weeks ago or something. And I read, I read the review uh, that it was supposed to be outdoors, but the rain forced you in. But you guys did a great job over at the levee. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun place. Now we uh, always had these connections with Fairfield College because a lot of the kids who go there have seen us over the years in New York or Boston or wherever they're from. Mm-hmm. So when we come to a big Catholic school like that, they they've already known us, you know. Uh, it's kind of a treat for them. Uh, my special guest right now is Mr. Larry Kerwan, who's based out of the New York City area and a great, great artist and leader of the band Black 47. I figure we get into some music uh, on this afternoon from your solo CD. Uh, Kilroy was here. Uh, and also on a release from Gadfly Records out of Burlington. And uh, I've got the track History of Ireland Part 1 queued up. Um, tell us about writing for your own solo work and... Uh, developing uh particular this song How- well that song could have been done by uh by black 47 very easily but there were a number of songs on um on kilroy that were coming from a certain place and memory and the instruments i was hearing on them were not ones that black 47 plays and uh, one was a double bass there was a trumpet and um yeah, there was a violin, and it's based around those with, with other instruments, too, of course. Uh, so I decided to do a solo album to work with those sounds. But with uh, History of Ireland could have been, in fact, 
we're still intending to do it. It's a Black 47 song someday. And it's, it's basically a tongue-in-cheek look at, at the history of Ireland and uh, how we always seem to be losing, you know, our battles and uh, seeing maybe there was another way of winning them than, than what actually happened. So it's a, it's a tongue-in-cheek rewrite of history but at the same time looking at the history and seeing what did happen because history is a mess you know people read history in books and you're always getting one person's point of view but uh from i'm a historian myself from my look at it it's it's just a big mishmash of things going wrong a lot of the time and basically 50 years later someone tries to put it back together into pieces you know put, or put it into one whole piece mm -hmm. whereas really it's uh it's just a mess or as one famous american general called it one goddamn thing after another <laughs> <laughs> so that's the way i kind of look at the history of ireland and but also it's a way for people to who might know these things to hear them in a, a musical setting and then the great thing now is uh, having Google or anything, if you say hear about an Irish hero like Red Hugh O'Donnell, you put it into Google and then you, you find out all the details of his life. So it's, it, in a way, it's slightly educational to pointer to people to let them know that they can look up this type of thing and, and become interested in the history themselves and the culture. So we'll listen to a historian slash singer, songwriter, guitarist, Mr. Larry Kerwan. And this is uh, from the CD. Kilroy was here. Uh, you can go to black47.com and uh, gadflyrecords.com. We'll listen to the History of Ireland Part 1 right here on the Upper Room and WVOF and come back and speak once again with Larry. And that's music from our special guest, his solo record, Mr. Larry Kerwan, who's also the leader and founder of Black 47. That's from Kilroy was here and the track that we listened to was entitled History of Ireland Part 1. So uh, we welcome back Larry and thank you uh, for coming by. And, My pleasure, Jeff. Uh, yeah, so, so this, how, how many solo records do you have out? Two or three? I have two. Okay. That one and one that I made for children of all ages called uh -huh. Celtic Kids about seven or eight years ago. And uh, we also should uh, let our listeners know Larry's also a radio host on Satellite Radio so you can Tell us how you got into uh, doing this great show. Yeah, I'm on, I got a call from Sirius uh, Satellite Radio about about two months ago, and right after St. Patrick's Day, actually, and they had tried to run, um, you know, an all-day Celtic show on St. Patrick's Day and realized how difficult it was to do it. So, so they gave me a call and said, would you be interested in coming in and working with us, you know, building up a, a Celtic-style library of, CDs and everything, and bring in your own stuff and just start doing a show. So I went in and I worked with Meg Griffin, who used to work with NEW in New York City. Mm -hmm. She's actually from, she lives out around Fairfield as far as I remember, right. Westport, I think. And she showed me how to, the technique of working in the studios. And then basically I just started to bring in CDs and do this three-hour show at, from noon to 3 p.m. every Saturday. And it's a wide variant thing because the, the Celtic nations were seven of them. You know, it was Ireland, Scotland, the Isle of Man, uh, Galicia and Spain, and Brittany and France, Cornwall, you know, six or seven. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so you, the music was pretty broad based. So it could be ending from, you know, Richard Thompson on one side to um, the Clancy Brothers on another side or uh -huh. Black 47 or uh, Sinead O'Connor or whatever, you know. So it's an interesting show, and then every three songs I give a little talk about what the songs were, and I would know some of the players in them and you know, give some anecdotes about them. So basically to get people to understand where the music came from and maybe where it's going a bit too with all the different bands that are happening now, like Flogging Molly and the Dropkick Murphys, you know, bands like that. So to show where their roots are. Right, right. So this can be heard on uh, Sirius and XM? On, on Sirius okay, every right. Saturday uh, okay. from noon to 3. And, and the and I, Oh, yeah, it's uh, Channel 99, Horizons, okay. on Sirius. On Sirius, okay. Uh, another uh, outlet for Black 47, I, I know you guys have an internet streaming station on Live 365. 
uh, Black 47, so they can check it out there, right? Yeah, you can always find out where we're playing, and we, we, tr- we have a news that goes out every three weeks or so. You can sign up for the newsletter. It's a free newsletter. And what I, in that, too, I try to make it so it's informative, not just a list of dates, but maybe have a, it'll be a piece of writing that would inform you about Irish culture about or about politics in Ireland or politics in the U.S., whatever, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, you, you definitely. I, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, over over the years looking at the website for the links and the in the news feed uh, links you have. So you you definitely stay involved, and uh, you know you know the album, which you know your latest album from Black Forty Seven, New York Town, which came out uh, last year. Well, know. we have a new one since then. We have one oh, okay. that came out with uh, with Green Suede Shoes, which oh is, okay, it's called Elvis Murphy's Green Suede Shoes. That's at about six weeks or so. Okay, I definitely have to scoop up that one so yeah yeah well well let's talk about new york town and then you can talk sure. about the uh the latest album new york town obviously a real personal record for you is talking about the town that uh you moved to and, and have come to love and, and live there so writing with everything happening in new york tell us about getting this one together well i actually got the you see black 47 is so involved with new york we were always called the house band of new york city so that when 9-11 happened, we came back to the city and started to play every Saturday night. We weren't due to do it until the end of October, November. We came right back that week and started to play up in Connolly's for the rescue workers and for, you know, trying to encourage people to come back into the center of the city. Mm-hmm. And we were involved in that pretty much for a year after it and didn't think that much about the whole situation, you know, because it was... It was kind of up to everybody in New York to do their part at that point. And uh, about a year after it, exactly a year after it, on the day it happened, I, was, uh, I decided to visit some churches. Not that I'm not a religious person in that sense, or, mm-hmm. but it seemed like the right thing to do. And while I was in the, uh, the Friends Meeting House over at the Quakers Meeting House, I got the idea, wow, I should just put all this down into... Uh, into an album because that's what we're about to give a record of what the city was like before 9-11 and what it's like just immediately after it because things changed in New York at that point and to put it down in song what the whole things were so I called in a number of um, um, singers that I knew like people like Roseanne Cash and uh, Suzzy Roach people like the Roach sisters and mm-hmm. Your own Christine Ullman from right, yeah, from uh, New Haven, and got them to do a duet on different songs, and to try and show what the city was like through the eyes of Black Forty Seven because we knew it intimately from being in every possible neighborhood because we started off as a bar band and played in what seems like every bar in the city. Uh-huh. So it was a it was a personal look at what New York was like before nine eleven and what happened on the day and then what happened up to that point a year later with the recovery and uh, writing about different people like Father Michael Judge, who was a fan of the band, was the, uh, the first person, the first victim, as they call it, of, mm-hmm. of the crash. Right, right. So it was personal, you know, it was, it was a good thing to do at the time and get it out, get it out of your system too. Uh, and... For people, people around the world have really appreciated it because it's a, an insider's look of what New York is about. So that album is uh, New York Town, Black 47. Larry Kerwan, who's our special guest, uh, wrote the songs and is the leader of the band. Um, you spoke on the latest record, which is uh, tied up with your, uh, your recent release of a book as well. Tell us about the content of this one and... Uh, Kind of yeah, music style. well, we, we hadn't intended to, to do an album so quickly after New York Town, but I had a contract to... I had a book out called Liverpool Fantasy two years ago. It did pretty well. It's about um, a story. If the Beatles hadn't made it, what would have happened to them? You know, and I got a, another contract out of that to do a book, and they suggested I do an autobiography um, called Green Suede Shoes, which was somewhat based on the songs of Black 47, to take, say, 30 of the songs mm-hmm. and tell your life story through them, because a lot of Black 47 songs are autobiographical. 
Um, so I was doing that and working on it, but some of the chapters, some of the things I wanted to write about um, hadn't been covered by Black 47 songs. So I started to write those down as I was writing the, uh, the book. And then all of a sudden we had eight or nine songs, new songs. So we thought, ah, let's just go ahead and bang them out and put an album out at the same time. Mm-hmm. And some of them were older songs that we never recorded, and some were new ones. So we had, in the end, we had 12 songs. And so we called that Elvis Murphy's Green Suede Shoes because Elvis Murphy was one of the songs on it to distinguish it from the album. Uh, so we released the um, the book and the CD at the same time, just before St. Patrick's Day this year. Is, and it an it's indie re- really well, yeah. Yeah. is it Is the record an independent release or is it on a label? It's on Gadfly also. Okay. I right. work with Gadfly a lot because uh, Mitch Cantor, the uh, the owner of the label, is an old friend of mine. So we, we have a particular deal that we work out where we still retain the rights to the the CDs and sell them through him, and he gets us the national distribution. So hey, that works really well that's for That's the way it should for all musicians. You do it the right way, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I, I got so sick of it because we had three major label albums out, two with EMI and one with Mercury. Mm-hmm. And basically when you put an album out like that, you give away your rights to it. So yeah. two of those albums have been deleted, and we can't even... We can't even buy copies from them. Yeah, yeah. You hear stories about musicians going into, you know, Greenwich Village record stores to pick up a copy of something they don't even have or can't get, right? Well, that 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 in itself, I've done that many times, oh, okay. but now <laughs> they don't even print up these two. You know, uh-huh. so, so the book is partly about that too, to advise. It, it's telling my story and the story of Black Forty Seven and telling the story of the bands that was in beforehand. So hopefully for musicians who are starting off or even ones who are in the business it's it's been a a great boon because i've made every mistake possible (laughs) (laughs) and they're all in there Uh uh-huh right so you know but particularly that one we we were so stupid you know um we signed away these rights you know so now i can't even there's nothing i can do with two of our albums you know right that that are owned by record companies they won't print them up they won't sell them to us and uh, not one lawyer, and I, d- I dealt with a lot of the music business lawyers, no music business lawyer has ever advised me on that. And I'm sure they're not advising any people who are going into record deals now that this is something you should, uh, you should look out for. You know that the honeymoon part will be over really soon now. You've got to protect yourself in this. How are you going to uh, use these records? Because they're your tools and trade, as it were. So I'm I'm opening, trying to open up a lot of musicians' eyes to the pitfalls that you might walk into, that I walked into, because you're just so happy to have someone like you and uh, release your records that you, you basically sign away a lot of your life with them. Right. You, you still get a kick about hearing your music on, on the radio? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I still get a kick out of it. I mean, right. I never listen to it at home. As soon as a, an album is done, I'll never listen to it again. So. Right. I tend not to hear it as much on radio as I was on yeah. jukeboxes, and I'll often walk into a bar and hear the song on a jukebox. Sometimes I don't even recognize them because Black 47 is such a live band mm-hmm. and, and an improv band that the songs will gradually morph into something else as they go along over the years, and we'll play them at different tempos or change them around. You know, We always feel free to experiment. I'm, I'm not one of those songwriters that feels that it has to stay the way I hear it. You know, Black 47 is a collective, and whoever's strongest on the night leads the band. Um, so I'll, I'll often be really surprised to walk in and hear a song in a jukebox and think, wow, that sounds familiar. <laughs> right, <laughs> and then right, realize, right. oh, it's us. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just changed it over the years. And that's well, one of the great things about this band, because we've never done the same set twice and maybe 2,000 gigs at this point. Uh, wow. Well, I'm, look, I'm on the page right where your uh, upcoming tour dates are, black47.com, and uh, you, you'll be playing at Patios in Boston June 17th, uh, June 18th at the Fairfield County Irish Festival at Indian Ledge Park in Trumbull, and uh, you got a bunch of high-profile shows, June 19th, Hudson River 
Revival Festival and uh, oh yeah, that's for Pete Seeger. That's always great. Oh yeah, yeah. N- nice venue on on the on the river, right? Yeah, that's, that's a great one. Yeah. And then if you want to take a cruise around New York, July twenty first, the Rocks Off concert cruise, Black Forty. Oh yeah, there. anybody wants a really wild yeah. night, just come down for that one because uh, we have a pirate night. <laughs> <All right. laughs> We've got a lot of pirates, and we take over this uh, cruise boat that goes around the city, and we. We play on it while the people are partying. It's is it tough to? Because I, I, I have a, ba- a friend's band who did one of those things, and and it tilts a little bit, right? While you're oh, playing, it, t- it tilts more than a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta like hold your position as well right. as things. Afterwards, your legs hurt from it because you gotta you gotta stay still because the microphone is you know is moving. But you gotta move with the mic and then move you know but you can't move your feet so you got to move your body the whole way so it's great fun i mean yeah I'm sure. <laughs> occasionally one guy will lose it and come crashing through you know? oh really <laughs> so you, well you can't be too precious about it so we, we do a big rave up yeah you know, too, too many sensitive songs on a night like that you know you gotta but that's a great thing about being in this band there's so many songs that you can you can tailor your night around the circumstances yeah Black 47, a great, great band. I'm sure they'll be back here at Fairfield University, uh, fall time, spring time. Black 47, uh, a real New York band via Ireland. And where, where was the original part where your family's from in Ireland? Wexford. Oh, okay. Yeah, southeast corner. So you get back home a lot? Yeah, I go about once a year. Uh-huh. Go back in, I go back in September this year because uh, the book is coming out there at that point. Okay, but great. the band also usually takes a tour over once a year, and we we bring about three busloads of fans with us. So we sponsor it and get a travel agent, and everybody comes with us. We do we do a week, and we do about four or five shows, and everybody comes to the shows, and then we take them on a historical or a literary tour and a pub tour in <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, the rest of the time. Yeah, uh, you'll find out details of that, and it's a great way to see Ireland if everyone's going for the first time, especially or another time, because you're with a big group and the music kind of unifies you. Well, that's the uh, words of Larry Kerwan, leader and founder of Black Forty Seven. Black Forty Seven dot com, also host of a great Celtic show, Celtic Crash, right? Celtic Crush, yeah. The crush on uh, Sirius Radio Channel ninety. Channel ninety nine. Ninety nine. Every right? Saturday from noon to three p.m. Okay, and everybody come out in the area to support Black 47. Uh, the Fairfield County Irish Festival held this year at Indian Ledge Park in Trumbull, and that is June 18th. And uh, as always, you know, you're going to be putting on a great show. So i got to thank you, Larry, for stopping yeah, by. Yeah, and we have all the CDs and uh, you know, the books and T-shirts. So if yeah. anybody wants to buy them, we, we take them around with us at the gigs. So the it'll be a great show there. I think they've got a great lineup in, in Trumbull this year. So. Yeah. Be a so, blast. so the green suede shoes accompanied by the uh, the record Elvis Murphy's green suede shoes Larry Kerr one so thanks so much for, thanks, for coming by and, and uh, you know hope to see you this summer in concert yeah, yeah. see you somewhere along the line yeah um, we'll go out with uh, a song you, you performed uh, Black 47 with David Johansson Joe Hansen and, uh, <laughs> that was a wild studio yeah, <laughs> yeah how, 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 I'm sure you guys go back a, a long ways but how about getting him to, to do the song with you uh, it was just, you know, David is from Staten Island, and I actually wrote the song for our drummer, Hammy, because he's really into the big band sound, uh, you know, Buddy Rich and all that. Right. So when I needed someone to sing. I was thinking, what woman could we get? And I was thinking, uh, who's the king of Staten Island? And <laughs> I go a long way back with David, someone with the New York Dolls, and then really knew him better as Buster Poindexter, because right, he used to yeah. play in the old Tramps on 15th Street, and... He's a big Irish singer. His, his people are, are Norwegian and Irish, so uh, he was always great at singing Danny Boy. So I gave him a call, and he said, yeah, sure. I'll be wow. down there in a minute. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he came in, and it was, a, it was an education actually working with him because he has such a knowledge of music. We, we just sat there, and he lectured us for about three hours, and he went out the door, <laughs> and we all went, wow. And he got it in one take. You know, he, he works really hard on something when he's, He's doing it. He also has a show on Sirius. Oh, he does? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he has two different shows where uh-huh. he, he plays his style of music, and they're a thrill to listen to, too. Yeah, so this is uh, Larry Kerwan, Black 47, and David, David Johansson, Staten Island Baby. And uh, thanks, Larry. 
Thanks, Joe. Talk to you soon, man.